Good morning. I hope this video finds you well. Today we're going to take a look at 1 Peter chapter 2. We're going to finish off the chapter today, verses 13 through uh, 25. 13 through 25. If you haven't already done so, grab your Bible and open up to 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, you might want to just pause this for a moment and take a look at these verses. I'm going to hit the highlights as we move forward. So, so far in this letter, uh, Peter has focused uh, on a living hope because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. One of the great uh, celebrative realities of the Easter season. Uh, and he has encouraged us to remain holy in Christ Jesus, the resurrection uh, brings to us the forgiveness of sins and salvation and life eternal as we are covered by Christ's righteousness, certainly in our baptism. Uh, and so Peter asks us or calls us to, to continue in that holiness. Uh, and he says that as we do so, right, we are being built on the foundation of Christ Jesus into a spiritual house or holy priesthood. Uh, God is in control as he continues to shape and mold and equip us as his people according to his design uh, that we would do the things that he sets before us to do. And so Peter hits these points in the reality of this dispersion, right? The Christian church is dispersed all over the known world, uh, Roman world at the time. Uh, and they are suffering separation, seclusion, uh, persecution, oppression, uh, all kinds of suffering the church was going through. And that's what makes this letter a good letter for us to work through as we continue to wrestle uh, to be God's people, the church in this day and age, uh, active, even though we are separated from one another. And our separation looks different, right? But it does bring suffering, and that makes this a good, a good book for us to work through. And so, as we continue uh, this morning through chapter two, here's a question that this section of scripture asks: How could a Christian? How should rather? How should a Christian behave in these days? How should Christians conduct themselves, and why? Should they behave this way? I think Peter's answer in verses 16 and 17 really hits the nail on the head. And, they, and, and he offers us an excellent point for us to consider. Verses 16 and 17 here, Peter says, Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect to everyone. Live, uh, I'm sorry, love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God, honor the king. And so let's break that down, right? The first part is live as free men. Live as free people. We are, right? Certainly our freedom is outlined in the Constitution. We're in the United States. We are free. Uh, land of the free, home of the brave, right? But more importantly, we are free in Christ as citizens of the kingdom of God. We are free from death. We are free from sin. We are free from the devil. Uh, and the resurrection of Christ has removed so many boundaries for us so that we are free to explore the depth and the breadth of his grace, living in community with one another, unfettered by our past. The second part of this, do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Uh, often we're tempted to think and to live as if our past followed us, uh, and it does continue to follow us around. We're tempted to think this way and live this way, that, that after we confess our sins and receive God's forgiveness, that we still have to pay for them, uh, which is not true. God uh, ex exercised all of his wrath on his son, and we dealt with that earlier as we were looking uh, previously in, in uh, 1 Peter. Uh, we're also tempted to hide the evil that others have done uh, rather than encourage them into the same freedom that we have in Christ. Uh, confession and absolution, again, very important here because Christ is risen, and he's paid for that 
sin too. He's paid for that problem too. He's paid for that uh, condition too. Uh, that situation too, whatever, and you can fill in the blanks, right? Whatever that sin or condition or, or situation was. Uh, and not only do we have this victory over sin and death, but so do our neighbors because Christ died for them too. Finally, Peter says, live as servants of God. Submit to authority that has been placed over you because God has allowed that authority for your benefit. God has allowed that authority for peace. Oh, man. What does that look like, right? What does that look like? Sometimes uh, submitting to authority is an attractive endeavor. Sometimes maybe not so much, right? So what does submitting to authority look like? Well, first, Peter says, show proper respect to everyone. That doesn't mean that they deserve it. It means that you show it to them. Right? We value life as God does. That's our call. Right, We are supposed to value life as God does. And we realize that every life is valuable. Every life is important. And when we value life this way, as God does, not only does it promote the relationships that we have with one another, but it also glorifies the God we worship, who truly is the author of life itself. Okay? The respect that Peter calls for here is a respect that isn't always earned. It's a respect that isn't always earned, but it's a respect that we give because of who we are in Christ Jesus, even when we suffer for doing good. And sometimes we do, don't we? Right? We may not like the authorities over us. We may not think that they're making good decisions and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, or maybe we think that they are. Uh, but regardless, we need to show them respect because that is who we are in Christ Jesus. Uh, the second thing that that looks like is it love, right? Love is the fulfillment of the law. That's what Jesus said. And as he does so, it's not necessarily love as an emotion, but it's love in action. It's love as a reverent respect. Okay, of course, there can be appropriate emotions uh, linked to that, connected with that, putting aside our comfort sometimes, our needs for the needs of others, but love in action is what Peter is going for here. And finally, Peter says, fear God, have reverence for God, and honor the king. Like it or not, the people who are in power over us are there because God allows them to be there. Are they perfect? Nope. Do they make mistakes? You bet they do. And we talk about respecting the office in our country, right? We respect the office of president. We respect the office of those who are in authority over, over us. And I think that's really what, what Peter is driving at here, right? We respect the office, which is a good way uh, to address this. We honor our leaders. We respect them uh, because they're agents of God who have been tasked for our uh, with with our protection, uh, with peace and righteousness, upholding those things and promoting those things in our land. Their job is tough, and we need not only to submit to them, uh, but do what we can to make their job easier. In doing these things, we revere or fear God, as Peter says, right? So Peter began this section saying, submit to every authority, kings, governors, etc. When we behave this way, we promote a good and peaceful society, which is a good thing for everybody, right? And we're seen by others who may not look favorably upon Christians. We're seen by others who may not look favorably upon Christianity. And our behavior, when we behave this way, begins to silence ignorant talk. It begins to silence slanderous talk. We reach out and we embrace and we seek to live in peaceful community with one another. And more often than not, we advance that objective. As people of God who are reaching out to those around us for the sake of the gospel, what do we want? We want them to have the joy of the resurrection. We want them to see Christ crucified and resurrected, God's love in us. And part of our job is to be an illustration of a good citizen, to show them what that looks like. 
All of these things in this section of scripture are patterned after Jesus, who completely entrusted himself to, ju to God who judges justly, bearing our sin, our imperfections in his body, that we would die to sin and live for righteousness, completely free. And yes, by his wounds, this is our reality. And we are healed of our sinfulness. Let's pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this day that you have given us. And we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we would submit ourselves to the governing authorities, that we would make good decisions in keeping and promoting peace uh, and community and, and a healthy society. Lord, we don't want to stand in the way of justice, uh, but we want to promote it. And so we ask that you would lead us to truly love our neighbor, uh, put that love into action uh, as we fear God and honor those in authority over us. These things we ask according to your will in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Blessings.